today I'm going to give you a quick run through about how to set up a Canon HF M31 video camera so it's recording in the best quality settings possible. So that way you're going to get the best picture you possibly can when you're out and about getting your recordings done. Now this tutorial is designed mainly for my students but it may be useful to other people out there who have access to this video camera. So just as a quick starting point we're going to give you an overview of the camera itself. Up the top left here we've got the on off switch for power. Uh, on the back here, if I spin the camera around, we've got the battery. To the right of that, we've got the start and stop recording. If I spin that around, we've got the fold-out screen, so we'll just pop that out like so. And behind the screen, we've got a few buttons that do various things. Firstly, we've got a display button to toggle through various display modes that are available to you. We've got a playback button or recording button to toggle between the two main modes of the camera. Down the bottom we've got a slot for an SD memory card if you want to add additional memory to the camera. Now you probably won't need to do that since this camera has got uh, 32 gig uh, built into it. To the right of that we've got a microphone input which you should use whenever possible and also we've got a AV slash headphone jack so that port can toggle between two modes. Above that we've got the battery release if you do need to switch out the battery. Spinning the camera around to the front we've got the lens and built-in lens cap and below that we've got a built-in microphone which if you can't get an external microphone you may need to use that. Spinning it around some more we've got the grip to hang on to the camera if you're using it handheld and beneath that, a bit tricky to access, we've got some ports for you to connect the computer up to uh, the computer or up to a TV perhaps. Beneath that we've got a thread to mount your camera onto a tripod. So let's just spin the camera around and we'll flip out the screen once more and I'll switch the camera on and when I do that you'll see that the lens cap instantly disappears and we can see the lens now exposed. So the camera is now switched on, if I spin it around you'll see the screen there, just move that back, there we go. So that's an overview of the hardware side of the camera. The one final thing which I just forgot to mention was um, up the top here just move that back, there we go. This little switch here is our zoom, so left to zoom out, right to zoom in. All right. Now, I want to set this camera up in its factory default settings and also set it up so it's recording in the highest quality possible. So I'm going to run through that with you now. Firstly, once the camera is switched on, push on the function button at the top here, then push on menu, touch on the spanner tab, and then scroll all the way down the bottom and you'll see one of the options is to reset all, reset the camera to factory default. So we'll touch on that brick. Are we sure? Yes we are. Let's touch on that. And the camera will reboot, erase any custom settings that have been dialed in there and now we're back to as if we got it out of the box, brand new. Now upon restarting it will ask you what the date and time is and you should put in those details but just to save time I'm going to skip that for now and we're in Paris in 2010. Now the next thing I want to do is erase the built-in memory because while the reset to factory defaults option gets rid of any um, options that have been dialed in, it doesn't actually erase the built-in memory. So we're going to do that now. We'll push on function, again the menu button, again the spanner icon and scroll down until you see initialize. Touch on that brick. Now it gives us an option if we want to initialize the built-in memory or if we want to initialize an SD card that might be plugged in. We don't have that at the moment, so we're just going to go with the built-in memory. And yes, we want to initialize. Yes, we are sure. And that will go through and erase any content that's been left on the camera from a previous student or previous recording. Now that may take a few moments. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is set up the camera so it's recording in the highest quality possible. Now by default, after you've done a factory reset, it's going to be recording in 7 megabits per second. The camera supports up to 24 megabits per second. Now I don't need to go into the technical details behind that, but basically it means that it's going to have more data or more, uh, more information to describe every frame of video that you're capturing if you're recording in 24 megabits per second versus 7 megabits per second. Now this is going to mean that we have bigger video files but these days memory is pretty cheap and there's plenty of space built, built into the camera so we're going to go with the highest quality possible. Touch on the film strip tab and whoops don't want to do that scroll down until you get to recording mode and then touch on the SP 
7 megabits per second and you get a new menu with the various recording options. We want to go with the highest quality one which is MXP or 24 megabits per second. So select that and then select the little back arrow. The other thing we're going to do is go into the frame rate options. Now there are two main standards for video. One is interlaced, one is progressive. Um, you don't need to know the differences right now about those, but these days most video is moving towards a progressive format rather than interlaced. There are instances where you'd use interlaced, but we're going to use progressive and it gives a more filmic look apart from anything else which is often nice to have. So we'll touch on the uh, brick for that frame rate option and we'll touch on PF25, progressive frames, 25 frames per second, and then we'll move out of that menu and close down that system. So now we've set up the camera so it's recording with the best quality possible. There's one last thing you probably want to do before you head out and start recording, and that is change the mode of the AV slash headphone jack. So back on the side of the camera here, this is the AV slash headphone jack. By default, it is an AV jack. So this is when you want to connect the camera up to the TV to maybe show off your work. We don't really want that while we're recording because what we want to be able to do is plug in some headphones and actually monitor what it is we're recording in terms of sound. So let's spin the camera back around again. And once more, we'll push on the function button and go into the menu. And this time we'll go over to the spanner icon and we'll scroll down until we see the AV slash headphone jack. Touch on the brick, which currently says AV, switch that to headphones. And now we can close that menu and exit out of the setup system. So that's set our camera up ready to go. Once you've done all that, Yes, there are other options you can dial in, but this gives us a good base to work from. Mm -hmm.